buenos dias, mis amigos. Alright, today I'm going to talk about the judgment of God a little bit here. And try to bring some understanding, some light to what exactly the judgment of God is. And I'm going to start in John chapter 17. Verse 10, all mine are thine and thine are mine. I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou has loved me okay now this also uh, corresponds or relates to John chapter 3 when Jesus says verily verily I say unto thee let me get there Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Okay, so when we are born of God, we are born of the Spirit of God, we are one in God. God is in us, and we are in God. Therefore, the judgment of God has already been made for us that believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright, so those of us that are born of God, we have God in us. Alright. So, let's go back up here. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Okay, so 
not only has the judgment been given to us, but God is in us. And we are in God, in spirit. The spirit of God. We are born of the spirit of God. Now, why is that important? Well, one, it you don't have peace otherwise. It's impossible to have peace in not knowing if you're saved or not. All right. So that is that's um, absolutely crucial, right? <laughs> you you ought to know that once you're saved you're saved forever okay forever and ever nothing can change that God has already determined that all right now G <clears throat> uh, and um, what, is, what is it Isaiah Nine, I think it is. Here, I gotta look it up. In Isaiah nine, Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. Right, In Isaiah nine verse six. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father the Prince of Peace right so without Jesus you can't have peace without knowing that you are eternally secured forever and ever you can't truly have peace right so um, let me show you one more verse here One more, one more verse here. There it is. I knew it was there somewhere. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus brings us peace that the world cannot and how is that? Well, that's when we are born of the Spirit of God. That's knowing that we are sealed forever. All right, sealed unto the day of redemption. All right, and the day of redemption is at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are transformed into our glorified body that's the day of redemption all right for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Alright, so that's the day of redemption. So in other words, we're saved before the end of the world. We're saved right now. Those of us that are born of God are saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever. Right now. Alright, and then also... Uh, behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed this is at the end of the world the day of redemption in a moment in the twinkling of an eye the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed alright <clears throat> so when this happens it is the end of the world now why is that important well if you understand that then Bible prophecy becomes simple. 
it becomes much easier to understand for sure okay all right so let's see let's see if I can find a verse here oh let's see Give me a second here. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So when God speaks, only those of us with ears can hear. All right, and then there's also another parable, or another uh, yeah, parable where the sheep know the voice of the shepherd, and when the shepherd speaks, the sheep come. If another man speak, the the sheep will not hear. All right, so this is why it's so important to, to in order to understand you must be born of God otherwise you can't hear what God is saying but once you are born of God then are your ears opened and then are you able to be able to hear the Word of God and real quickly, uh, here in Isaiah 6, Make the heart of this people fat, make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see at any time and hear with their ears and their seeing with their heart, and convert and be healed. This is the same thing. Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. And of course, when we are born of God, we are healed. And therefore our ears are opened and we're able to hear and understand. All right. And oh boy. Let's see if I can find a parallel to Isaiah 6. There it is, 13. Everything's in 13. Or same thing same thing that we're reading here in Isaiah 6 make this people's heart or for this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them all right so again another parable is the time of the harvest the time of the harvest is the end of the world all right the time of the harvest is when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and he separates the wheat and the tares all right now that judgment of who the wheat is has already been determined once we are born of the spirit of god it's our, that's when that's the moment of judgment when god uh, gives his spirit to us and we are one with God all right now the judgment of this world is at the end of the world and that's when the separation is made because that's the the saved will be saved and separated all right so we're saved today we that are born of God are saved right now the end of the world is the separation all right so there's uh, the judgment that has already been determined for us that are saved and then the judgment at the end of the world when there's the separation and all the unsaved are destroyed pretty simple stuff it really is it's not complicated but when you understand that then so also 
should you be able to apply this to Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 and I saw thrones they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them judgment was given unto them that's us that are saved the judgment of God has already been given to us that are saved sealed secured sanctified forever we sit on heavenly thrones all right we are one with God right now all right so when we read in Revelation 1 for example he has made us kings right now and priests of God right now we sit on heavenly thrones right now and the judgment of God has been given to us right now right just like what we read in John chapter 17 all mine are thine and thine are mine and I am glorified in them see Jesus is in us right now right now I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one all right being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ all right, so we should be confident, confident that we are sealed forever, sanctified forever. Without that confidence, without knowing that you are saved forever and nothing can ever take that away, then can you have peace. Without it, you can't have peace at all. If you have uncertainty of whether you're saved, you have no peace whatsoever. Knowing that you are saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever, then, now, you have peace. Okay? John 15, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except to abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. 